Welcome to our 8.30 worship service here in the sanctuary of Covenant Church in Omaha, Nebraska. Glad that you've joined us and hopefully you've had a very Merry Christmas. And as we are about to begin a new year in 2021, we will pray that God's blessing will be on all of us and the church united through all the world uh, to the glory of God as we lift up uh, the name above all names, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Before I pray to open our worship service, I want to read Holy Scripture. The Word of God leads us into this new year, and I quote from Hebrews 10, 23 through 25, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day dawning near. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the love of Jesus. We thank you for the begotten love of you, O Father, who gave us Jesus Christ, the newborn baby in Bethlehem, as we come to celebrate his birth in our Christmas Eve services and in our Advent services, Lord, we are now waiting for his return at the consummation of history. Find us faithful of encouraging one another and building each other up in the faith uh, throughout 2021 as we look to this new year, knowing that you are with us wherever we go. And may all that we do glorify God as we continue to enjoy you now and forevermore. And we pray this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
and welcome to this Sunday after Christmas. This has been an exciting week, both because of the birth of our Savior and also because of an astronomical event called the Christmas Star. If you haven't been following that, astronomers have been telling us that on December 21st of this last week, that Saturn and Jupiter were going to come together so close you could see them in the early night sky. They call it a great conjunction or, as we call it, the Christmas star. This had not happened since 1226 A.D., almost 800 years ago. Now, there's another Christmas star, and that's the one that Matthew talks about in his gospel when Jesus was born, and the wise men followed that star, and it brought them to Jesus so they could worship this God's son, the king, the newborn king of Israel. Today, God is asking us, what does the Christmas star mean to us? Like the wise men, Jesus has called us to follow him and to follow him. He is the shepherd, the good shepherd, the one who says, come, follow me. And as we follow him, as we let him be the one that takes us through life, let him be in charge. As I say to the kids, the boss of our life. And we tell him the things we do. We tell him the good things we ask him to forgive us for the bad things for those sins those things we do wrong where we need a savior so today we're going to pray and we're going to ask the lord to let us follow him like the wise men he is as peter says he is the morning star so he will rise in your heart and others will see the light of jesus through you as you follow him. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, I want to follow you. I ask, dear Lord, today that you would forgive me for the things I've done wrong, for the sins that have come between me and you. I want you to be my good shepherd, be the boss of my life, and I will follow you from this day until the day I see you in heaven. Amen. Hello, everyone. Today's message is called Follow the Star, and we're going to begin with a scripture from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Here's the word, hear the word of the Lord. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose, and have come to worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Now, as we begin today, we've read about the wise men coming. During the Christmas season, many people drive around to look at home light displays. There are certain items that shine out as true Christmas themes in these amazing displays. You may see Christmas wreaths, icicles, giant candles, presents, nativity scenes, carolers, reindeer, Santa and his sleigh, angels, and stars. One home in our neighborhood has a star on top of their roof with several strings of lights that stream to the ground. The idea is to make the star look like a floodlight from heaven, and at the base of that streaming lights is, sits a nativity scene. No nativity scene is complete without baby Jesus, Mary, Joseph, shepherd, sheep, a cow, three wise men, and an angel. Some stables have a star attached at the peak of the roof. Two more popular Christmas tree toppers are angels and stars. Why? When a person hears the nativity stories in Matthew and Luke, He's immediately drawn to the angel Gabriel and Luke and the star that led the wise men to Bethlehem in Matthew. This year, astronomers like Patrick Hartigan of Rice University were quoted in magazine articles concerning a Christmas star called a Great Conjunction. Saturn and Jupiter on December 21st in the day before and after, you could see clearly, if, like in my neighborhood, a uh, with, when the sky was clear, <laughs> you could see these 
two planets coming almost together. It had been 800 years almost since March 4th, 1226 AD. This is an amazing thing. The 12 days of Christmas song refers to Christmas through the evening of January 5th. The Feast of Epiphany falls on January 6th. Why do I bring that up with the Christmas star? Because this is the day where we celebrate the wise men arriving in Bethlehem with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh for the Christ child. The Western Church holds a traditional view that there were three wise men. The Eastern Church holds a view that it could be 12 or more. From all my research, I have come to the conclusion that nobody knows but the people that were there and God himself. The point is, not how many there were, but the reason they came. Now, let's look at some of the historical facts. Jesus was born in Bethlehem according to scripture. Mary was his mother. Joseph was his earthly father. Jesus was Jewish from the bloodline of Judah through King David. Angels proclaimed his coming. Shepherds were the first eyewitnesses to his birth. A star led wise men from the east to worship the newborn king. Jesus came from heaven to save our sins. And King Herod was a very bad man. <laughs> so Matthew lays out the family lineage of Christ Jesus. Then he goes right for the Jewish prophetic, as I call it, jugular vein. Matthew records a historical arrival of the wise men from the east who show up in Jerusalem with the intent to worship the newborn king. Any good Jew in those days that read Matthew's account about this caravan, a wise man, at the doorstep of King Herod would definitely read the rest of the story. One of the essentials of good storytelling is grab the audience quickly. Matthew grabs the attention of the reader with an evil villain king and the entire city of David in an uproar. And he does it in two verses. What is all this about the star? The king question. How did this star escape the notice of an evil king who made it his business to know everything and anything that would be a threat to his throne? He had no problem killing anyone that he perceived as a threat, including close family members. Sensing a new threat to his throne, he asked, when did the stars appear in the sky? Clues lie in the text itself. Matthew uses the Greek word that is translated magi. In the English, this Greek word is based in the Persian language. It alludes to the school of wise men noted in Daniel 2, when King Nebuchadnezzar called on the school of wise men to help interpret a dream. The prophet Daniel was a card-carrying member of this school of magi. Magi were trained in subjects like philosophy, history, mathematics, astrology, astronomy, and dream interpretation. These men were trained to research matters of great importance. The Magi were diligent in their study once they saw that star. They eventually concluded that a king so great had been born in Judea that they had to drop everything and head to Jerusalem to worship him. Why Jerusalem? Jerusalem was the capital of Judea. Judea, yes. And where would the king be born? Where the king of Judea lived. So off they went. Modern compute. now this is where it gets fun, guys. Modern computer software, such as Starry Night, allows us non-Magi people to look into the night sky from anywhere on the planet, in any direction, at any time in history. Calculations behind such software is in use currently by NASA for space launches. Why? Planets and star movements must be accurately accounted for in the past, in the present, and into the future so projects like the Mars rover will land where they're supposed to land. Now, when you take Jupiter and Saturn, Jupiter goes around the Earth just under 12 years, rota I'm sorry, around the sun, just under 12 years. Saturn is 29.4 years. And going around, and that's probably one reason it take, took 800 years for them to get so close. Now, King David penned these words. In Psalm 19, verses 1 through 4, and these words take into account the Christmas star. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. 
Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there any words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. These very heavens, whose voice declared the glory of God, pointed the Magi in the direction of Jerusalem. This is the very speech David speaks of concerning God's heaven that revealed knowledge of a newborn king in the land of Judea. This is the Emmanuel come to save mankind from its sins, according to the prophet Isaiah. On the DVD, The Star of Bethlehem, presenter Rick Larson shows the night sky from more than 700 miles east of Jerusalem at the time the sign of the first star appeared. The planet Jupiter moved three times in a circular motion in what is called retrograde movement above a star called Regulus. Regulus is known as the king star. It looks like Jupiter is drawing a crown above Regulus. From where the Magi made their observations, this happened within the constellation of Leo the Lion. The tribe of Judah is referred to as the Lion. Jesus is called the Lion of Judah. This fact was not lost on the Magi. This astronomical event occurred during the Jewish New Year in September called Rosh Hashanah, more than two years before King Herod's death. And it's all on computer. Matthew Henry tells us in his commentary on the Gospel of Matthew about Balaam's prophecy in Numbers 24, verse 17. He wrote that a star should come out of Jacob, pointing at a scepter that shall rise out of Israel. Matthew Henry points out that Balaam came from the mountains far to the east of Canaan. Matthew Henry states that there was a general expectation in those eastern parts that some great prince should appear. Ancient historian Tacitus noted, quote, a persuasion existed in the minds of many that some ancient writings of the priests contained a prediction that about the, that time an eastern power would prevail and that persons proceeding from Judea would obtain dominion, unquote. Now, let's go further. Ancient historian Suetonius speaks of it as well so that this extraordinary phenomenon was construed as pointing to that king. And we may suppose a divine impression made upon their minds enabled them to interpret this star as a signal given by heaven for the birth of Christ. Some church theologians theorize that the Magi had copies of the Hebrew Bible from the time of Daniel. Through all the studies and information available to them, the Magi arrived at the true meaning of this awesome event, spoken with confirmation in the heavens. Their conclusion by itself is remarkable. The final proof to them came some nine months later when Jupiter and Regulus aligned so close together as to create what we saw this past week, a great conjunction. This second heavenly sighting of the star could be seen toward the west from Babylon in the twilight of the evening. Once again, it appeared within the constellation of Leo. It stayed bright and true, while the constellation of Virgo followed Leo into the sunset sky. Virgo means virgin in the Latin language. Beneath this constellation was a crescent moon that could be seen while the evening sun still shone amidst Virgo. A look into the vision John saw on the island of Patmos reveals a striking parallel to what the Magi witnessed some nine months after the first sign appeared. Listen to this, Revelation 12, verse 1. And a great sign appeared in the heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains in the agony of giving birth. Could it be that the Magi and John the Apostle witnessed the truth David declared in Psalm 19? The heavens declare the glory of God. The Magi put two, to, two together, and they traveled westward hundreds of miles, over 700 miles we hear from what I read, to Jerusalem. The song We Three Kings of Orient are, written in the 1800s, paints the picture of three kings following yonder star until they find Jesus. Well, it's inaccurate. 
the wise men had seen these wonderful things, and these two signs caused them to say, hey, this is more than just a coincidence, as Gibbs would say on NCIS Rule 39. Church historian Eusebius wrote in the history of the church that King Herod was the first non-Jewish king or leader of Judah in its history. Scripture prophesied Jesus would come when the leadership was no longer in Jewish hands. Even when they were under the Greeks or the Persians, they would have an appointed governor, leader, or religious leaders that were Jewish until King Herod. Non-Jewish King Herod knew who to turn to for religious answers. He had made it his business to know his subjects to make sure they remained under his rule. Herod gathered, listen to this, all, Scripture says all, the chief priests, that would be even the Sanhedrin, and scribes of the people. He left no stone unturned. He made sure all the key religious leaders were in attendance. Then he inquired of them where Messiah was to be born. What fascinates me is that of all the Jewish leaders, it was King Herod that brought up the subject of Messiah. It wasn't them, it was him. There is no mention in scripture of these religious leaders taking time to research the answer to Herod's question. They knew it without hesitation. It took a non-Jew to recognize the greater question in all that was going on with the stars, wise men, and a baby born to be king. Herod figured this all pointed to Messiah. Herod had studied enough Jewish prophecy to know that Messiah was not good for his health. With his paranoia, the whole idea of Messiah showing up must have rocked him to his core. We see his fears play out later when Herod orders the death of all the boys, two and younger in Bethlehem, because it lined up with when the star first appeared. So let's read the scripture. Matthew 2, 6. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. These religious leaders knew the scriptures, but they totally missed the spiritual significance of the moment. Not one, not one of these religious leaders offered or desired to go with the wise men. This spiritual blindness and hardness of heart was pointed out to religious leaders by Messiah himself some 33 years later when he taught in the temple the last week of his life before the cross. And Jesus called them blind, leading the blind. The apostle Paul warns Timothy that in the last days there will be people who have the appearance of godliness but deny its power. Avoid such people, Paul told him. Throughout the entire length of scripture, from Genesis to Revelation, there exists a tension between the true followers of God Almighty and those who are lovers of self, between the God of light and the prince of darkness. So now we see these magi, followers of God, standing before a bloodthirsty, murderous king, asking, where is he who is born king of the Jews? These wise men had not kept up with CNN or Fox News. They would have known more about Herod than they did. I find that interesting. King Herod and his religious advisors stood before the magi, lovers of themselves, compromised teachers of the law, staring into the face of true believers. Again, I remind you, not one of those teachers of the law offered to or went with the Magi. So I asked this question. If this truly was the long way to Messiah, wouldn't one of the teachers go with them? I'm sure the Magi could have spared a camel. The tension between these true followers of God and lovers of themselves filled the palace halls. We come to the place in Matthew's story where King Herod lets out his evil diplomatic closet. He pulls it out like the, his father, the devil. Herod sets out to use his position to lie, deceive, and murder an innocent child. Matthew tells us in chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. Matthew goes on in verses 9 through 12. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, 
The star they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother. And they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Now listen to this. Starry Night Computer Software estimates, by, uh, Larson took the estimate of when they would have ended up in Jerusalem, and he went over a several-month period and looked through the computer programming, and guess what he found out? Get this. Jupiter shows up moving around in retrograde again as if it's backing up. It's an optical illusion in the sky. And it shows up over Bethlehem. And when it's moved to the one side and then it comes back the other way, it literally stops over Bethlehem, just as the Bible said. Amazing. So, Herod secretly sent the Magi out and covered darkness. Well, God lit the welcome lamp in the heavens for these dedicated followers of the Most High God. These wise men fell down and worshipped the Christ child while his mother witnessed the event. They honored him with treasures. Dr. J. Vernon McGee writes about these gifts. Gold speaks of his birth. He is born a king. Frankincense speaks of the fragrance of his life. Myrrh speaks of his death. All of this is indicated in the gifts that were brought to him at his first coming. But at his next coming, myrrh will not be brought to him. The next time Jesus comes, he won't come to die on a cross with the sins of the world. He will come as the King of kings and Lord of lords. When God speaks to us like he spoke to those wise men, will we search out the meaning he has for our lives? Will we follow the star of his glory so his light will cover us and forgive our failings? You and I have been called like the shepherds were that first night. You and I have been called like these wise men who crossed the desert. You and I have been called like the wise men who followed the heavenly vision to the Christ child. And now we're being called to follow the one who made the stars and called each of them by name. He calls you by name. He's written your name on the palm of his nail-scarred hand. Do not let the voices of the field Drowned out the voice from above that calls you to himself. I'm reminded of a story from the Korean War, as told by Larkin Spivey in his book, Stories of Faith and Courage from the Korean War. Quote, a group of American soldiers were held prisoner in a little farming community named Sambakal, deep in the mountains of North Korea. Living conditions were harsh. Poor constructed houses offered little protection in the 40 below temperatures known in Korea. The approach of Christmas offered little cheer to the men struggling to stay alive. For some reason, the prison staff decided that Christmas would be a good time to give the prisoners a demonstration of how well North Korean children had been indoctrinated into communism. They brought a group of 7 and 10 year olds into the small building to perform for the prisoners, not as a holiday gesture, but as a propaganda show. The children were costumes, sang patriotic songs, and displayed the hammer and the sickle, all to the glory of life under communism. During a pause in the performance, one of the prisoners began softly singing, Silent Night. One after another, more voices around the room joined the chorus. Suddenly, the children started singing the song as well. The Americans were dumbstruck. These children knew the song, and they obviously knew the Christmas story. As every voice in the room came together for the final words, sleep in heavenly peace. The guards realized their propaganda show had gone wrong. Whistles blew as the youngsters were herded out of the building, leaving a group of smiling American prisoners with a renewed sense of hope and the first stirring of the Christmas spirit. Listen, Jesus came to save us from our sins and to bring us hope in the midst of this world's darkness. God's light shone into the darkness of this world. The King Herods of this world sow doubt, death, and darkness. They try to stomp Jesus out today like the first Herod tried to many years ago. These King Herods do not want you and me to follow the bright and morning star who came to forgive our sins and heal our souls. 
The glory of this life and its wisdom holds nothing in the face of the glory of God that shouts truth from the heavens and hope for your heart. Peter the Apostle leaves us with this today in 2 Peter 1.19. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Like those wise men long ago, like those American prisoners not so long ago, you can choose to follow the one who named the stars and put them in motion. Jesus is the bright and morning star who came to be the lamp to shine into the dark places of your heart and life. He is the promise that the day will dawn and he, the morning star, will rise in your heart. Jesus wants to rise in your heart today, all you who are listening, that you may know his heavenly peace. The wise men opened the treasures of their hearts and gave them to Jesus. Today I ask you, God asks you, open the treasures of your heart and give them to Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you are the bright and morning star. Please rise within our hearts. Bring healing upon your wings that we may know your heavenly peace this day. Forgive us for the times we failed to follow the heavenly vision. Give us strength from heaven that we may declare your glory to the ends of the earth. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. We now come to our minutes for mission for our December 27th, 2020 worship service here at Covenant, and we are focusing on our mission work that we've done in Nicaragua. The year is 1998, and we send a team, myself and another elder, down to the Campus Crusade for Christ uh, Leadership Academy, where we taught a two-week course on the Gospel of Luke. It was there that we met missionaries Bob and Noemi Cayazo. They became friends right away, and the video will explain the rest of their work that they continue to do in Nicaragua. These 25-year missionaries to the country of Nicaragua, you will see our medical mission in part in Noemi's part pictures uh, when we took a pediatric heart surgery team from Children's Hospital here in Omaha to operate on 12 children uh, one week. We now present to you our mission partners uh, in 2020 and in 2021 as well, 
Bob and Noemi Cayazo in the country of Nicaragua. Bob and Noemi Cayazo have spent the last 25 years in Latin America building God's dream. The majority of this time has been in Nicaragua where they have been spreading the Lord's word and bringing hope to the people of Nicaragua. His work involves traveling all over Nicaragua, visiting police outposts, and taking the gospel of Jesus Christ even to the most remote areas of the country. By donating Bibles, the various members of the law enforcement agencies better understand God's word. Working with the Nicaraguan National Police Force has been incredibly rewarding work. Bob has been given the chance to speak to high-ranking officers, the SWAT teams, and the police academy in addition to female police officers and fire department officers. It has been an amazing opportunity to share the gospel of salvation. Bob's efforts include giving Bibles and hosting conferences to strengthen family values. He has also taught and shared the importance of leadership and moral and spiritual values. Bob's work has also involved the baseball chapel, which has presented the opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ to many professional players. The church has been an open door for the players to discuss the Lord's teachings. He has also held Bible studies so the players can reflect on God's word. Noemi has focused her efforts on caring for the sick and needy by bringing surgical medical teams to Nicaragua. These medical teams have performed much-needed surgeries, including hundreds of cataract surgeries, cornea transplants, reconstructive surgeries of the ears, nose, and tracheal surgeries, and open-heart surgeries for children with very special needs. She has also helped run a pediatric clinic in the capital city of Manac, where needy and sick children are able to receive care and obtain the medicines they need. She has also spent a great deal of time in the remote mountain villages of Rancho Grande and Cerro Verde. Thanks to her efforts, two feeding centers have been established in these villages and provide nutritious meals to the neediest children. They now feed over 230 children. She has also opened a technical farming school in Rancho Grande, where the students learn to grow their own food and care for livestock. As the school was built, step by step, God's faithfulness was seen by all. The students hear God's word and learn to see for God. With the collaboration of a university group in the United States called Project Nicaragua, laptops have been donated to the school to give the students more access to educational resources. Attached to the technical farming school is a sewing school for single mothers, widows, and orphans in the community. Here they learn how to sew and are given the opportunity to earn small incomes and provide for their family. Bob and Noemi feel blessed for the opportunities they have received and hope to continue their amazing journey spreading God's word. Well, as we bring our worship service to a close on this first Sunday after Christmas, 
Again, I want to thank you for joining us today. All of us who are listening and viewing on YouTube or Facebook, we're so glad that you are part of our worshiping community. I have two announcements to bring uh, to our attention as we come to a conclusion. First of them has to do with finances and coming from our church finance team. Finance team would encourage us if we have year-end giving to the church to please submit that. We, we do want to finish this year on a high note financially in December. So indeed, if you have a contribution to make, we would uh, have you do so before January, or excuse me, December 31st. And uh, you can do that by coming into the church office Monday through Thursday from 9 to 3. You can submit it electronically using our church's website. Or you can simply put a stamp on an envelope and mail it to us as well. And further, in addition to that, we ask you to be considering your pledge and commitment contribution to Covenant for 2021. As things stand right now, we have only 55% of our target for our 2021 pledge budget. And so if you've not yet submitted and made a pledge, we ask you to consider doing so at your earliest convenience. If you have already done so, we thank you very much and simply ask you perhaps to pray and ask the Lord if you might increase your giving for the coming year. Second announcement I want to make is indeed we will next be gathered together here at Covenant for worship in the new year. It will be 2021. I will be starting a new series of messages entitled the gospel of God for us. The gospel of God for us. I am excited about it. We're going to go back to the basics because the Christian message at its core is the gospel of God, the good news of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, or as the Christmas angel announced, glad tidings of great joy that will be for all the people. So we're going to ask ourselves, what is the gospel of God and how does it make a difference in our lives each and every day? I'm looking forward and ask you to join us for that series. And until next Sunday, we would invite you to continue in the spirit of Christmas. After all, Christmas isn't really over. You know, there are the 12 days of Christmas that extend till December 6th. So continue in the joy of Christmas with your loved ones, with your family, and with our church family here at Covenant. Joy to the world, the Lord is come, and joy to you and yours in our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen.